Here we're gonna take what I think is a pretty interesting and unique approach to the Basel problem, and that is to find the infinite sum of the reciprocals of the squares. So it's pretty easy to show that this kind of series converges, but it's fairly tricky to find out the sum. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. There's the famous way that Euler did it, and then there are some other ways as well, using Fourier series and so on and so forth. Here we're gonna do something a little bit different. But before we get started, we need two following tools. The first tool says that the sum of the reciprocal of the squares is equal to four thirds times the sum of the reciprocals of the squares of just the odd and in positive integers. And then secondly, we're gonna use the fact that one over m plus one squared equals the integral from one to zero as of x to the m natural log of x dx. And I should say here that I put one in the lower bound and zero in the upper bound to keep a minus sign out of this. If I had put zero to one, I would have needed to include a minus sign. And this statement is true for all m not equal to negative one, although we'll only have um, natural numbers to worry about here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this first goal. So here we have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over n squared. So now what I wanna do this is break this into even terms and odd terms. So I can break it into even terms and it looks like this. The sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n squared. So those are gonna be all the even terms plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of one over two n minus one quantity squared. So that's gonna be all of the odd terms. But now it's pretty easy to see that we can square this two and bring it out. And that's gonna give us one quarter, the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n squared plus the sum n equals one to infinity of one over two n minus one squared. And now we've got a simple algebraic equation that we can use to solve our sum of reciprocal of squares in terms of the sum of reciprocals of odd squares. So in other words, we have three quarters, the sum n equals one to infinity of one over n squared equals the sum n equals one to infinity of one over two n minus one quantity squared. And then multiplying both sides by four thirds will get us to our solution. Okay, so now we've proved this first tool and we're ready to move on to the second. So I'll start with the right hand side and work towards the left hand side. So I'm starting with the integral from one to zero of x to the m natural log of x dx. Now I'm gonna use integration by parts. There's two big hints that we need to use integration by parts. Maybe the most glaring one is we are integrating something that looks like an inverse function. So the natural log of x, you wanna think about the inverse of the exponential function. And whenever you're integrating inverse functions, integration by parts is a good choice. And so we'll take u to be natural log of x. And we do that because that's the inverse function and also because if we take the derivative of natural log, we get something simpler. So in this case, we have du is one over x dx. And then next we'll take dv to be the rest. So if u is natural log of x, dv is x to the m times dx. But then since we're assuming that m is not equal to negative one, I haven't written that out, but we'll just verbally confirm that we can see that V is equal to one over M plus one X to the M plus one. And now we have all of our parts to do our integration by parts of this integral. So let's see what we get. So we're gonna have U times V. So I'll go ahead and write that as one over M plus one X to the M plus one times natural log of X. We need to evaluate that from one to zero and then I have minus the integral of v du. So v du, I'll take this one over m plus one and bring it out and let this one over x multiply this x to the m plus one down to x to the m. So in other words, I have minus one over m plus one, the integral from one to zero of x to the m dx. Great. 
Now let's talk through what we get from evaluating this first bit. So if we plug in zero, we have a problem with natural log because that limit is going to be negative infinity, but it's easy to check with L'Hopital's rule or maybe something else that because we have this x to the m plus one here, and now we'll assume that m is a positive integer, this is gonna cancel out. So we'll get zero plugging in x equals zero or x approaching zero, then we know that the natural log of one is equal to zero, so we get zero for that term as well. So in other words, all of this cancels down to zero. Next, we can take the antiderivative of x to the m, and that's gonna give us minus one over m plus one squared. We get an extra m plus one term in the denominator, and now we have x to the m plus one. We need to evaluate that from one to zero. Now I'll go ahead and take this minus sign, get rid of it into a plus sign by changing the order of evaluation here. But then evaluating that at one gives us one over m plus one squared, which is exactly what we wanted to get. Okay, so now we've got our second and last tool and now we're ready to move on to our main result. So the first thing that we'll do is use the first tool to rewrite this sum of reciprocal of squares as a sum of reciprocal of odd squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this as 4 thirds times the sum n equals one to infinity of one over two n minus one quantity squared. Now, in order to make our calculation a little clearer, I'm going to re-index this sum a little bit, and I'm gonna re-index this so I start at n equals zero, but I can do that very easily by just putting an n to n plus one here. Here I'm replacing n with n plus one, and that's what we get in this case. Okay, great. And now what I can do is use this second tool to rewrite each of these one over two n plus one quantity squareds as this type of integral. So now we have 4 thirds times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of the integral from 1 to 0 of x to the 2n times natural log of x dx. So again, using this second tool, I can replace this integral as exactly this 1 over 2n plus 1 quantity squared. Okay, fantastic. Now what I want to do is bring this sum inside the integral. I can do that via something called the dominated convergence theorem. So that's going to give me 4 thirds. And now I have the integral from 1 to 0 of the natural log of x times the sum n equals 0 to infinity of x to the 2n and then dx. But now that is exactly a geometric series. And in fact, it's a kind of nice geometric series. We can go ahead and add this up and we'll get one over one minus x squared. So here we have four thirds, the integral from one to zero. Now we have natural log of x over one minus x squared dx. And just to reiterate what happened, we took the sum of this geometric series. Notice the starting term is one and the common ratio is x squared. And we summed that to give us this one over one minus x squared, which showed up in the integral. Okay, fantastic. Now the real trick is to rewrite this natural log of x as a difference of two things. And we're gonna do this in a couple of stages. So here we have, this is four thirds, and now the integral from one to zero of one over one minus x squared, I'm gonna bring that out. And now I'm gonna rewrite natural log of x as the natural log of x minus the natural log of one. Notice the natural log of one is zero, so that's easy to do. And now we can use some logarithm rules. So we'll use a logarithm rule to add a square right here at the cost of putting a one half out front. So notice if we bring this one half inside the logarithm, it'll cancel that square, so I did not change anything here. Next, we're gonna use a pretty tricky fact from Calculus One, like when you're learning about limits of rational functions in order to rewrite this natural log of x squared in a certain way. So we'll notice that the natural log of x squared can be rewritten as the limit as y goes to infinity of the natural log of one plus x squared y squared over one plus y squared. 
So let's box that maybe. So notice as y is approaching infinity, the argument of this natural log is approaching x squared because there we've got a rational function in y. So notice the leading coefficient in the numerator is x squared, the leading coefficient in the denominator is one, which tells you that this interior is approaching x squared over one, which means the whole thing is approaching the natural log of x squared. Okay, so that's one thing that we want to notice. And another thing that we want to notice is that this natural log of one can be rewritten as this same term where we have evaluated y at zero. So in other words, we can rewrite all of this. So let's take this one half out of this maybe in the following way. So we've got four thirds and then we've got the integral from one to zero of one over one minus x squared. And then we've got a half. And then we've got the natural log of one plus x squared y squared over one plus y squared evaluated from y equals zero up to y equals infinity. Okay, good. Now I want to point out here that these two are the same. If y is approaching infinity, we talked our way through why we get natural log of x squared here. And then if y is equal to zero, we get natural log of one, which that was zero. And that's why that doesn't show up up here. Now I'll go ahead and bring this up and we'll move on to the next step. So on the last board, we arrived at our goal sum in this following integral form. So I've actually done one step off of the board. Here we had natural log of this term over this term, but I've used a log rule in order to split those up. Now the next thing that I wanna do is turn this thing, which looks like the evaluation of a single integral into a single integral. And I can do that by taking the partial derivative of this with respect to y. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have 4 thirds, then we have the integral from one to zero of one over one minus x squared. That's kind of coming down for free. Great. Now, like I said, we're going to take the partial derivative of all of this with respect to y. So let's put a partial with respect to y here. And in order to do that, we need to add a single integral in, and that single integral will be with respect to y, and it goes from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's see what we get. So if we take the partial of this with respect to y, we're going to send this one um, plus x squared y squared to the denominator. And then we'll have uh, the derivative of the inside with respect to y, which will be 2x squared y. Great. Now we're going to do the same kind of thing over here. That's going to be minus. Now we'll have 2y over 1 plus y squared. And now we have dy dx. Okay, great. And now what I want to notice is that I can take this 2 and cancel it with this 2 and this 2 just by distributing that half through. And then the next thing that I want to do is combine these two things via finding a common denominator. So my common denominator will be clearly the product of these two. So let's see what we get for that. So we've got 4 thirds. And now we have the integral from one to zero and the integral from zero to infinity of, so let's write this out, we've got x squared y times one plus y squared minus y times one plus x squared y squared all over one plus x squared y squared times one plus y squared. And now we have dy dx. So what I did is I took this numerator multiplied by this denominator, this numerator multiplied by this denominator, and that gives me my new numerator after subtracting them like that. And then my new denominator is just that product of the old denominators. Okay, so now let's see what we get from here. So now we will have, oh, I just realized that I left out a one over one minus x squared from this guy right here. Okay. So now multiplying this out, I'll have x squared y plus x squared y cubed minus y minus x squared y cubed. Good. But now some stuff cancels. Notice this x squared y cubed term cancels. 
And then furthermore, we can factor something out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and factor a negative y out of this. So if I take these two remaining terms and factor a negative y out, I'm left with one minus x squared. Good. So now this one minus x squared will cancel with this one minus x squared. And then next, this minus sign can be changed to a plus if we change this back ordering to zero to one instead of one to zero. Now let's see what we have. So we have four thirds and now the integral is gonna be zero to one and zero to infinity. Now, after all of this carnage of canceling things out, our numerator is just y, and our denominator is 1 plus x squared y squared times 1 plus y squared. And then I'm doing a y integral first and an x integral second. Now, the next thing that I want to do is apply Fubini's theorem, which tells me I can change the order of integration to change this to an x integral and then a y integral. But I'll do that as we move up to the next board. Okay, so now we're picking up with the integral that we had on the last board. I have changed the order of integration and I factored this function of y out of the interior integral, which is possible because it is with respect to x. Now, the antiderivative of this inside function is actually pretty standard so I'll let you guys look that up if you need to but suffice it to say we're going to get four thirds and then the integral from zero to infinity we've got y over one plus y squared and this is going to be one over y times arc tan of x times y we need to evaluate that from zero to one and then we've got a y integral on the outside so notice if we take the derivative of this inverse tangent, we're gonna get one over x squared times y squared times the derivative of this with respect to x, which will be y, that'll cancel this one over y, so that's why that works. So notice that this y will cancel this y down to just the number one. And then furthermore, if we plug in x equals one, we'll get arctan of y. If we plug in x equals zero, we'll get arctan of zero which is zero. So in the end, we'll have four thirds and then the integral from zero to infinity of arc tan of y over one plus y squared dy. And now all that remains is a simple u substitution. So we wanna notice that the inverse tangent function is inside the integral and its derivative is also inside the integral. So let's go ahead and set u equal to arctan of y. That's gonna make du equal to one over one plus y squared, good. And so that means that here this dy over one plus y squared is my du term, and this is my u term. Furthermore, when y is equal to zero, that implies that u is also equal to zero because arctan of zero is zero like we discussed before. And then as y approaches infinity, u is approaching pi over two just by the asymptotic nature of the inverse tangent function. So that means we can completely change this y integral to a u integral. It'll be four thirds times the integral from zero to pi halves of u du. And now we're pretty much home free. So this is gonna be four thirds times u squared over two evaluated from zero to pi halves. Notice I can take this four thirds, cancel the one, sorry, the two in the denominator down to a one, and then I have two thirds. So in the end, I get that this is equal to two thirds times pi squared over two squared. In other words, it's equal to pi squared over six, which is the expected value of this sum. And that's a good place to stop.